are so important, and this is what we're going to focus on today. Because if you think, for example, I'm not worth it, your actions are not going to follow with this thought. And we all start to create stories about, you know, I'm, I can't do this, or I don't want to do that, when in fact, you are able to. And it's just about starting to realize that your thoughts are nothing more than that. They're just thoughts. It's not reality. And when you can start to detach yourself from your thought, then you can choose what thoughts you want to pay attention to and what thoughts you can begin to just let go of. When I was younger, I, I didn't eat healthy and I didn't grow up in the most stable environment. My mom at a young age started muffling her words and I was like, oh, she must be tired a lot. Well, I was wrong. She was on value most of the time and at a young age she started to verbally abuse me, saying, you're worthless, you're useless, I wish you were never born, I wish you were my daughter. And, I mean, that's my mom, so you can only imagine how I felt. At a young age I had no self-esteem. And everything that she was telling me, I started to believe. I started to actually think, I am worthless. Why am I born? What's my purpose? So I actually really believe this. And I still get negative thoughts in my head today, but the difference is I have done a lot of self-help on my own, and I've realized that thoughts are nothing more than thoughts. They're all words. And if we begin to realize that we can control this and that we are not our circumstance, we can make a huge difference in our lives. And I have, and I know that all of you can too. And Today we're going to give you a few simple techniques for you to be able to detach from your thoughts and not be your thought. Three years ago, I was in a relationship with a guy that I absolutely adored. I loved everything about him. The problem was, we didn't get along at all. So we would argue, and these arguments progressively got worse it became where I would just sit there and he would just verbally abuse me for what seemed like forever. He started to convince me that I really needed help. He told me that, I, that he thought I was bipolar and that I needed to make an appointment with a psychiatrist. And I have friends and I, I know people who have been diagnosed with that, so I thought, this is serious, I better make an appointment. I must be bipolar. <laughs> so I went and I got my evaluation and the psychiatrist told me, no, you're fine. And it was such an eye-opener because I thought, all this time, I thought there was something horribly wrong with me. And there wasn't. And so, with that in mind, I thought, okay, well, if there's nothing horribly wrong with me, then what else might I be thinking that is not true. So I started paying more attention to, to what I was thinking. And I started being able to recognize that my thoughts were not reality. So if I thought, um, you know, I'm, I'm not able to do this. Am I really not able to do that? Or do I just think I'm not able to do that? And so using techniques like this started to help me detach from my thoughts and really start working towards figuring out who I really am and what I'm really capable of doing. You're not what your thoughts are. We have thoughts coming through our head constantly. I'm sure you guys are all thinking, you're t listening to me, but you're thinking other thoughts. And we take no offense to you thinking about other things. It's normal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna, but once you realize that you can separate from your thoughts, then you're gonna realize you can really change your life. So thoughts, like we said, are just words and they're background noise. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't control your thoughts, you can't turn negative thoughts into positive thoughts, but what you can do is stop yourself when you're having a thought and ask yourself, is this thought helpful? If it is, then go ahead and accept it as truth. If it's not helpful, let it go. 80% of our thoughts are negative, or so the psychologist says that I read about. <laughs> so it's actually not our fault when we try to stop our thoughts. We can't. Even Zen masters, the best ones in the world, can't stop their thoughts. So I don't know if you guys have you guys ever been to like a yoga class and you're like, oh, I'm in yoga or I'm at an exercise class, I shouldn't be thinking right now. And that happens to me all the time. 
<laughs> so, but we can't stop our thoughts. They're just there, and they're going to be there. And how I think of it is like the radio. You're, you have the radio on, it's always playing in the background. Our thoughts are always constantly playing. Even when you're at a social setting, you're at dinner with someone, you're probably still thinking about something else. It's just how it is. Uh, my yoga teacher always says, when you're going to have a thought, you can say, I wonder what my next thought's going to be. Then you kind of defer that thought, and it's, it's not who you are. Close your eyes. And I want you to think of a thought that normally would upset you. And put the words, I am, in front of it. For example, I am inadequate. This is what I have thought most of my life. And I actually attach that to me. So think of a thought that it would upset you. I am. Take a minute. Take a few breaths. And notice how this is affecting you. How this thought is upsetting you. And now open your eyes. Now I want you to think about the thought, I am a banana. Now close your eyes again. And notice how that affects you. I am a banana. Okay, open your eyes. So normally when we ask people this, the first reaction to the first part is, wow, that, that hurt me. It's because we attach so much meaning. So if you were to put I am in front of the words inadequate or stupid or not worth it, that really affects you. But if you say I'm a banana, it's funny. It's all just words. Just as with any exercise, whether it's physical or mental, it takes time and it takes consistency. So for example, if you decide, I'm going to get fit. You start going to the gym, you know, you want to get like a six pack or whatever. And it's going to take time. You can't just go to the gym twice and expect the results. So in a similar way, with mental exercises, you need to continue doing it. You can't just practice it once or twice and figure, oh, I got it. If it doesn't work, oh, it didn't work your eyes. And bring that thought, whatever that thought that upsets you, back into your mind. And focus on how you're feeling. Now, with your eyes still closed, I want you to add the words, I'm having a thought that, and then fill in the blank with your thought. Pay attention how that feels. So open your eyes, and the purpose of this is to start recognizing that it is just a thought. So for example, in Ashley's example, you would think, I'm having a thought that I'm inadequate. And then your mind is like, oh, it's just a thought. I'm not really inadequate. I'm having a thought that I'm inadequate. And so you begin to create that separation from your thought and the reality. So a few years ago, I decided I'm going to start meditating. I didn't know anything about it. Sat on my floor, breathed, and then I said, all these thoughts are coming in my head. I must be doing it wrong. I stopped doing it because I thought, I have all these thoughts. It's no point anyway. I'm not going to do it. Has that ever happened to anybody here who's meditated? You have thoughts come in your head? Yeah, it's normal. But I've learned that it's okay to have thoughts come in your head. They're going to come in. But it's about how we defer those thoughts out. As long as we just breathe, let them come in, and let them go, that's what matters. So when you're meditating, which I urge all of you to at least try it, it's okay to have the thoughts, but it will help you with deferring the thoughts. If you've thought. never meditated before, what do you suggest is the first way to kind of get into it? How do you start? Well, how I started, uh, I first started silent and I realized it didn't work for me. So I started doing Deepak Chopra's guided meditations. And there's also um, a website that you can go on and get like 10 minutes free for like a week. So starting off guided, I think, is best until you get comfortable with breathing or saying like a mantra like so hum, which is like I am. That's how I do. work your way up to doing the silent ones. The silent ones are really good for like changing your brain and your hypothalamus and memory. So there's a lot of studies even with brain uh, improving your brain function with meditation. So thank you guys again, and remember, you guys are the author of your lives, and you guys can create anything you want, and don't let your thoughts control you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.